On the 18th of July 1944, exactly six weeks after the Allied landings in Normandy, the British Second Army launched Operation Goodwood. Involving the combined strength of the Guards, 7th and 11th Armoured Divisions, the main objective of Goodwood was to secure the high ground to the southeast of Caen and convince the Germans that this was the main Allied offensive to break out from the Normandy beachhead. Preceded by heavy air and artillery bombardment, the British advance got underway at 0745 on the 18th of July, with the 11th Armoured Division leading the way. A few hours later, at 1100, the Guards Armoured Division commenced moving up behind the 11th Armoured, with the 1st Battalion, the Coldstream Guards, constituting one of two battalions that were leading the division forward. The initial task assigned to the coal streamers was the capture of an area just east of Cagney, but delays in securing this village meant that the battalion was instead tasked with protecting the left flank of the British advance. It was on the left flank that troubling reports had been received regarding a concentration of German tanks, as Robert Boscoen, a Sherman tank crewman in No. 2 Squadron of the 1st Coldstream Guards, described in his diary. Panther tanks had been reported to our left, and as my troop happened to be on the extreme left, I turned them in that direction and kept a good lookout. Our tracks were nicely covered in the tall corn, but we were a sitting target to any panther in the woods. Whilst the reports of German armour were correct, unbeknown to the British at the time, was that these tanks were not panthers, but in fact tigers and king tigers of the 503rd Heavy SS Panzer Battalion. Since the 8th of July, this battalion had been in position in the woods near Manaville, and as a result of the air bombardment that preceded Operation Goodwood, many of the unit's Tigers were either destroyed or had suffered heavy damage. In spite of these casualties, a dozen or so tanks were brought back into operational service once again, including eight King Tigers, which, at approximately 1200 on the 18th of July, left Manaville to launch an attack in the direction of Dumaville. However, unfortunately for the Germans, this counter-attack didn't get off to the best of starts, as author Wolfgang Schneider records. The company commander's tank, King Tiger 100, falls into a bomb crater and cannot be recovered. Meanwhile, as the German counter-attack got underway, the tanks of the 1st Coldstream Guards had just arrived in their positions, protecting the left flank of the British advance. Holding the front line were No. 1 and No. 2 squadrons, on the right and left respectively, whilst No. 3 squadron was held in reserve. For a short while, there was no developments in the battalion's sector, until about 12.15 on the 18th of July when No. 1 Squadron spotted the advancing King Tigers. Immediately, elements of the squadron deployed into action, including one of the units, Sherman Fireflies, commanded by Lieutenant Malcolm Locke, which moved forward and commenced stalking one of the King Tigers. From the inside of his turret, Lieutenant Locke ordered his gunner to load an armoured piercing round into the breech of the 17-pounder main gun and fire it at the enemy tank. Within seconds, the round had left the far fly and pierced the King Tiger's side armour, leading to an internal explosion within the German tank. Moments later, a second King Tiger was knocked out, although who or what was responsible for this second kill isn't known, as the first Coldstream guards only claimed to have taken out one of the Tigers, and which Lieutenant Malcolm Locke incorrectly identified as a Panther tank. Number 1 Squadron claimed the only enemy tank, a Panther, knocked out by the battalion that day. It was seen to catch fire. Nonetheless, the King Tiger force had lost two of its tanks in quick succession, and as British tank fire continued to target their location, 
the German SS tank crews deployed a smoke screen along the front line before withdrawing in the direction they had come from. Author Ian Dugleish explains that The counterattack was broken by a devastating torrent of fire. With it was broken the Tiger cruiser's self-belief and sense of invulnerability. The action of Number 1 Squadron in breaking up the German counterattack prevented the King Tigers from reaching the lines of communication areas of the Guards and 11th Armoured Divisions. Moreover, this engagement was the first time that King Tigers were employed into combat, and with it, Lieutenant Malcolm Locke and the crew of his Sherman Farfly had become the first tank crewman to knock one out, with an impressive one round. That night, on the 18th of July 1944, Robert Boscoen in No. 2 Squadron noted in his diary, Malcolm Locke got it with his Farfly, the 17-pounder Sherman. He did very well getting it, I heard afterwards, having stalked close. With one shot, it brewed up nicely. 